All right. All right. Hey, LA Progressive friends and family. I'm uh, sitting here uh, right now with a person who I have tremendous admiration and respect for. Um, Pastor Q is we, what we know him as in the progressive community here in Los Angeles. And for many years, he has um, held church uh, down in Skid Row. And Pastor Q, I'm going to ask you if you would Give us a little bit of your bio. Yes, yes. So my name is Pastor Q. I pastor the church with our walls in Skid Row. Uh, last week, we celebrated our 18th year anniversary uh, on the streets of Skid Row. We, When we say the church with our walls, we literally mean the church with our walls. So we've been meeting outside for the past 18 years. We just opened the Peace and Healing Center in Skid Row. I am the founder and director of both. Uh, I also work with clergy and lady united as uh, united for economic justice as a faith rooted organizer. That organization was started by uh, bless his soul and rest in peace, Reverend James Lawson, who just passed away. Uh, and so, yeah, that's just a little bit of my my bio. I came from the hip hop industry and we can go on and on. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You did come from the hip hop industry. <laughs> Occasionally, you you know, I've seen you perform downtown for for various events. Right. Um, and I've even I've called on you not for performance, but I do remember one time there was an event going on that got a little bit out of hand. Right. And uh, <laughs> we needed somebody that had some street cred. Right. That it calmed down the crowd and it was a pretty big crowd. I don't know, maybe over a hundred people that were in this room and you did that successfully. I, I, I looked across and looked, who can I call on? And there was Pastor Q. So um, Pastor Q, before I turned on the recording, I was asking you about how, because the radical right and particularly the Christian aspect of the radical right gets so much airplay that for people who are not Christians, they may think that that's an a, a an appropriate or an accurate representation of Christianity. What would you say to that? Well when you think about Christianity, they, they, you have to look at a from, look at it from a broad perspective, right? Because I mean Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a Christian, right? Uh, Reverend James Lawson, who I just mentioned, was a Christian. Right. Mama Harriet Tubman was a Christian. Uh, Nat Turner was a Christian. So I can go on and on. Uh, uh, John Brown, uh, one of my favorite white guys, was a Christian. Right? He was an abolitionist. Right. And actually started an insurrection. And many of them felt like they were hearing from God when they took the actions that they took. So. Uh, and then when you look at the modern day, one of the things uh, I usually tell folks is that uh, the theologian uh, James Cone right, uh, says that theology is not God's speech, but it's human speech, meaning that theology is what human beings say about what God said. So when we think about the Christian right, when we think about all of that, we have to remember that it was the Aristotelian philosophy brought in uh, by the Puritans that gave way to uh, slavery in America. That was their philosophy and they justified that. We know it was the Quakers who opposed uh, slavery and were the abolitionists, but there's always been, been these two uh, movements uh, in America, two main movements, of course, you, you have, you know, uh, offshoots of all of that. But when we think about uh, how the nation was built, it was built, as far as I'm concerned, on Christian nationalism. Mm. It was built on Christian Zionism. And we know that there are more Z Christian Zionists than there are Jewish Zionists mm -hmm. in America. Right. Uh, I think it's they, the number is over 10 million Christian Zionists because they're uh, some of it is interchangeable with the Christian right. Right. That's why you can have the Christian right 
in 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 Charlottesville, you can have people saying Jews will not replace Jews us. Will not replace and us. now at the same time, as now later as Netanyahu is doing what he's doing in uh in 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 Gaza, they're on his side. So they're they they they're following the fascism, they're following the brutality. Yes. You know, does that make sense? So, yes, absolutely. So that's the thread there. What right. they're following is brutality and fascism. Um, right. And then they may call themselves Zionists, but they're real. They're clearly Zionist when the head Zionist is being as brutal as possible to the Palestinian. That's when they are in support. Ab absolutely. But otherwise, they don't like uh, Jewish folks. Now, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't mean to go here, but remember that the Jews were not exterminated by people of color, right? The Jews were not brutalized in Europe by people of color. As a matter of fact, the reason we have the issues we have uh, in in uh, in Gaza right now is because no one else wanted the Jewish people, right? They were trying to get rid of them, and they decided to go and and, and allow them to take uh, to to inhabit a place that um, they of a people that they could tolerate that they couldn't tolerate more than they couldn't tolerate the Jews, right? So um, so when we think about this, it's the same thread of uh, Christian nationalism. I've sat in churches when I first uh, started uh, following Christ. I started sat in churches and listened to all of the rhetoric, heard all of the rhetoric. I thought some of the rhetoric was, was, was true until you sit down next to folks, until you hear the history of what happened uh, in 1948 and beyond. So... Yeah, they're, they're, they've been dangerous and they're not just causing havoc in America, they're causing havoc in Europe. Yeah, yeah. So do you feel that the, um, for lack of a better term, progressive Christians, the voice of progressive Christians is growing? Um, I would say that, I wouldn't say it's growing, but I would say it's there. Uh, and I would say that it's been consistently there, but us it's about living our faith and expressing our faith through love. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, I certainly, uh, Dick and I have gone down uh, to Skid Row and we've attended uh, one of your services. Ooh, throws our butts off, but you did provide blankets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was, uh, the weather was uh, considerably different than it is today. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've been down there for 18 years. Now, yes, reflecting yes. on those 18 years, did you initially, when you started the Church Without Walls, did you intend to be down there for as long as you have been? Did you have a vision for what your time down there would be like? No, I did not. I did not. I just felt like God was saying to me, I want you to start the Church Without Walls and I said, in my spirit, a church without walls, because obviously I didn't hear a audible voice, but it was, you know, this strong unction in my spirit. I want you to start the church without walls. And I said, a church without walls. And I felt like God was saying, no, the church without walls. I want you to give an expression of the church that's different than what people are used to. Well, let us pray. Is that something God asking you to do, and he's been asking you to do, and you know he's been asking you to do it, but you've been putting it off? Huh? How about doing it in the next seven days? How about doing it as soon as you can? <laughs> but that's the way it goes down on Skid Row, baby. That's how we do it. It goes down on Skid Row. This is the kind of church where you never know what's going to happen. It goes that. We don't, we don't do church on the block. Church on the block, we do church. That's right. When you leave here, you won't know you love. Now, is there anybody who wants to have a relationship with the most magnificent God ever? The only one. Anybody who wants to get to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Who doesn't? Is 
something magical or something just crazy spiritual about serving somebody when you're doing that if you look at that person as really God standing there because spiritually that person was made in the image of God and I think that's why Jesus said whatever you did whatever you did for those that person you did it for me he's saying if you want to be intimate and if you, you want to have a deep relationship with me serve me that's why I come out seeing going back to your your question right how come you know the voice is allowed but there are people there's, there's god always has a remnant of folks who are doing stuff so i didn't imagine that we would be there for 18 years i couldn't even think about 18 years <laughs> 18 years ago um i was just there uh just just trying to help the folks and and, and do what i felt god was calling me to do and it's funny you know when you say the church without walls the symbolism there is powerful um, for me because so many churches, as a matter of fact, it's probably uh, not a stretch to say most churches, not only do they have walls, but they have doors that they lock and they lock people out. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, I was just teaching, you know, in the book of Revelation about the seven churches and how they encompass church history in the entirety of church history right and we we feel like we're in the in the age of of uh where the church married the state right where the church um and anytime the church has married the state is that it has resulted in violence we know that doing doing the uh the spanish inquisition we know that the jesuits you you know were murdering people who were actually saying that they were christ followers but these were all the pope uh, at one time had the Bible chained to his pulpit, right? And Jesuits were actually basically law enforcement for the for the Pope, right? To actually carry out the papal decree, right? And if you did not follow what the Pope said, um, you couldn't read the Bible on your own. You had to listen to what the Pope said. And if you did not follow what the Pope said, they would kill you. Uh, millions of Christians were killed uh, in those days. And so, the, so the Jesuits were the gangsters for the Pope. Come on now. Yep. Yep. So now you're looking at what's going on today and the Christian right of the gangsters uh, for, <laughs> you know, themselves. Right. And and this is nothing new. This is this is uh, I remember there's a text where Jesus says uh, last week I taught on this. Actually, there's a text where Jesus said, you know, I know uh, I know your deeds uh, talking about a church called Church of Philadelphia in, in those days in what is now modern day Turkey, but it was called Asia Minor. He said, I know your deeds, right? And I know those who say they are Jews, but are of the synagogue of Satan, right? So they say they're Jews, but they are of the synagogue of Satan. And the characteristics of those folks was oppression. They were oppressing people who really wanted to follow God, right? And so what I said, the same thing with Christianity, right? Um, there are those who say they're Christians, but I think Jesus, if he was here today, he would say, you say you are Christ follower, but you are of the synagogue of Satan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Isn't that something? <laughs> well, yeah. well, well, I am so appreciative. Like I, you know, I opened up this talk by saying that I really do hold you in high esteem. And I do, and I'm, I'm not just saying it, you know, because I'm taping this, I'm, I'm saying it because I believe I, that's, a, that's how I believe. And, and I've watched your walk. I mm -hmm. see what you sacrifice. I see, you know, the, the, the contributions that your presence and having that space, holding that space in Skid Row. Whew. Lord, I, I tell you, sometimes when um, Dick and I just drive through Skid Row, I just break down and cry mm -hmm. because um, people who have never seen those areas in Los Angeles and there are many people who live right here in Los Angeles, but they drive in the freeways over. They, you know, they go from LAX and then they, you know, drive on to South Pasadena, beautiful homes in South Pasadena, or their beautiful homes in the San Fernando Valley, or they have no idea what is going on down there. Right. Well, you know, there was just an article this morning about uh, the, the houseless situation, the homeless situation in, Skid, in, in just in Los Angeles as a whole. Uh, about, I think, uh, out of 11,000 people who died on the street, um, about 3,000 of them were elderly, right? Uh, and so it's showing how, and I've been saying this uh, for years, but it's showing how increasingly the folks who are actually dying on the street are folks who are over 50. 
right? Yes. So our senior citizens are being left out to dry. Yes. Well, you know, I, my, I lost my mother uh, three years ago now uh, mm -hmm. to Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And when she was first diagnosed, Pastor Q, it was like a, uh, a veil was lifted from my eyes mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. terms of the lack of support services Come on now. that are available to seniors. Mm -hmm. And the way that, um, first of all, she like many people in the early stages of Alzheimer's, she hit it well. Mm -hmm. We didn't, she, I'm the eldest, there are four of us. We didn't know what was happening to her. And mm -hmm. my mother's only was only 18 years older than me. So mm -hmm. she was very young, very vibrant, physically fit, and she just started to forget things and she'd make a little joke about it and we'd go on our way. And then, you know, she started doing weird things like my sister was helping her with her accounting and, she, and my sister called me. She said, mommy has paid the same gas bill 10 times. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, because she, because my mother had called me asking for money. And I'm like, why are you running out of money? She's running out of money because she's paying all these bills over and over again because she's forgotten that she's already paid them. But we don't have, as far as I know, systems in place that recognize that this is happening and mm -hmm. contact family members or stop taking her money. Right. So right. I could see where, you know, if she didn't own her own home or mm -hmm. if she had not paid her taxes, she could easily have just been put out in the street if she didn't have right. family. Mm -hmm. And I bet that's happened to so many oh. seniors. Oh, yeah, it has. It has. There are a lot of people. And most of the folks look like you and me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or houseless in Skid Row, you know that already. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they are literally uh, just displacing our senior citizens. Thank you for sticking around. If you like the LA Progressive content and the discussions we have here, please consider clicking the subscribe button below and also give us a thumbs up. That helps to grow our audience by feeding the algorithm, which helps to get this content in front of more eyes. Thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate your support.